good day or good evening, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are. It's good to have you with us. I hope you're doing well today. I'm Henrik from Sweden, and this is Red Eyes Radio. Thank you for tuning in. RedEyesCreations.com and RedEyesMembers.com is our websites. You can uh, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. Also, make sure to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and to our RSS feeds to get the latest radio shows and news. Today, we're going to touch base with author, filmmaker, and producer Jay Widener. He is behind the Kubrick's Odyssey series, among other things. It uh, was a while ago since we had him on, and we are going to talk about the craziness we face in the West right now, the suicidal policies brought on by the insanity of the progressives with their immigration policies, gun control, and of course the uh, Trotskyite neocons with their war industry and centralization. There's uh, no denying it. The cultural Marxists are pushing this at every turn from both ends of the political spectrum in order to achieve their desired outcome, which is complete ruin. Hi, Jay. Welcome back. It's uh, great to have you with us again. I think it was December 16th, 2012, actually, last time we spoke. It's almost a year and a half ago, way too long. So it's great to have you back again. Yeah, it's great to be back, Henrik. Thank you, Jay. Now, you know, the the apocalypse that we are uh, facing in these current times, because I do believe we are actually to a certain extent, but it's truly looking very different than the one I imagine when we, you know, spoke with you way back when in, in 2007, the first time you were on the show. You know, the world has taken turns towards the extreme absurdum, the, the, the idiocracy type degeneration we're seeing amongst, uh, you know, Westerners and others is just extraordinary, you know, and, and I wanted to talk with you a little bit more about some of your latest work here a bit later. I know you have a third Kubrick film coming out. You have another one, uh, The Last Avatar, I want to ask you about, but I kind of just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things that we're currently uh, facing specifically in the West, all these false flags that are going on. Uh, America has an open border to the South and everything. It's just like, it feels like everything is just coming apart at the seams, Jay. I mean, is this part of the apocalyptic you know, nature of all the things that we talked about many years ago, do you think? Uh, well, I do. I, I think that I think that the we what we did, what I think a lot of us did, um, was we underestimated the left, and we didn't realize that they were they would do anything to destroy the West, and we thought somehow I think we thought mistakenly that they were liberal, maybe a little wrong-headed in some things, but that they didn't want to bring down the entire uh, world, uh, but now I think we can see, especially after six over six years of Obama, that the left actually does want to bring down the entire West, and I think we have to realize that they 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 want us gone. They have a belief. Their belief is that socialism is this great and wonderful thing, and that the reason it hasn't worked ever in every experiment that has been tried. It's because there's this pesky country called the United States, which keeps stopping it from working successfully. And so they reached the conclusion in the late 70s, it was uh, Bill Ayers, a, a member of the Weather Underground, and his wife, Bernadine Dorn, they reached the conclusion that the only way that socialism, world communism, Marxism, whatever you want to call it, progressivism, whatever, the only way that it would work the only possible way that it would ever work is to bring down the United States completely. And so that has been the goal since the late 70s. We know this is true because uh, there was an FBI infiltrator into the Weather Underground who, who actually heard them say that they were going to have to probably kill somewhere between 20 to 40 million white people who would never um, be able to be re-educated. And uh, so uh, I think when you, when you understand that, then you can understand why Obama wanted his health care plan in uh, so quickly and why he didn't want jobs or, or anything else. He wanted the health care plan. And, and the reason is is because that could be the mechanism, dare I say, of a slow and quiet apocalypse because he can eliminate his political enemies through the health care. I know that sounds insidious. Uh, but it's not the first time that it's ever happened. The Soviet Union did it, and so does Red, Red China. Yeah. Uh, eliminate their political opponents via their healthcare system. And so I'm contending that 
uh, just like conservative people got targeted by the IRS and by the Justice Department in the United States, so too is the healthcare system going to target people because of their political persuasions. And uh, yeah. it's very, very disconcerting. And I hope I'm wrong on this, but I, every day I think I get nearer to the point of believing that this is exactly what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I believe you're right, of course. Uh, it, I mean, it's amazing how we've seen um, history also being rewritten specifically when it comes to the founding of America and the, the full on attack on, on, you know, the American founding fathers and everything in the way that they were, they were, you know, male, uh, horrible, racist bigots. They were, you know, it's like, I mean, you have to, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. I think I heard it in one of those, the white privilege conference that they said, what was it yeah. they said there? Oh, uh, we, they probably, well, we didn't hear anything about their sexuality, but they could have been gay. You know, it's like, exactly. They're, they're doing and everything. White privilege you know? itself. Yeah. White privilege is, is, this is their new code word because they used to be racist, but, um, everybody began realizing that all races were racist and so you could call a black person a racist or an Asian person a racist so all of a sudden racist and because they over the left overused the word left uh, racist by calling everybody on the face of the earth that disagreed with them a racist it's lost all of its its uh, power its cachet yeah. so yeah then so now it's white privilege which is exactly targeting the right race that needs to be targeted and uh, uh, what cracks me up about the left more than anything else is that no one is more racially conscious that I've ever met than left-leaning people yeah. and yet they call everyone that they disagree with a racist even though it's all assumption you can always tell if you want to know uh, the political persuasion of the person you're talking to if you want to find out if they're left-leaning Start watching and seeing if they make assumptions. If they start making assumptions, then you're probably dealing with some uh, a left-leaning person. They, if you know the left, the left sees the, a bunch of people in the Tea Party movement get together, and because they all have white skin, then they must be racist, <laughs> even though they didn't yeah. say anything that was exactly. racist. Exactly. So, oh, oh, it's get, turning into a KKK meeting there now. You know, exactly. So. <laughs> it is one assumption after another. If you're if you own your own business, then you're you are exploiting your workers. You are uh, cheating on your taxes. Um, it, it's continuous like that. Yeah. And uh, and, and then they make assumptions the other way for people that they want to help. So, uh, you know, dark-skinned people are all really good and they don't, never do anything wrong. And, and so it's, it's just all these assumptions and, and, and that never really basing it on anything but politics. And, and not politics of the mind, politics of the heart. It's not really thinking about something and then making the right decision. It's about does it feel good or not? Yeah. Does it feel good to send children back from the border back to their own countries? No, it doesn't feel good. Therefore, we shouldn't do it. Not whether it's a good idea or is it right that these children should be with their parents back in Central America. That's not the question. The question is, does it feel good? Does it make me feel good? And any time that you're you know, making decisions on whether it makes you feel good or not, you're making bad decisions. Well, exactly. And I, I think at the, what, what they fail to realize is that at the end of it, it's not going to feel that very good if this continues, you know, so it's a very short term strategy, completely based on emotion, completely just based on uh, an, an irrational appeal to some of these uh, fantasy concepts that they managed to set up. But I mean, th I think that this is how they're seeking the the destruction of of uh, of the country of America, of what at least what it has represented, because I mean, Obama certainly by design has uh, is convinced that overwhelming the system is something that's going to crash it. You know, we had a, a Cloward and Piven strategy, you know, outlined in sixty six yep. of of just trying to, uh, you know, called for basically overloading the entire public welfare system, uh, so so that the crisis would lead to a replacement of the entire system. So that everyone would get on a you know a guaranteed annual income and thus ending poverty. I mean it, it. I mean in my ears it doesn't sound right and and good at all because I know what it means at the end of the day. But unfortunately, a lot of people are appealed. Uh, it's appealing because of the nature of this sounds so wonderful, right? It's about egalitarianism, uh, you yep. know, welfare for everybody, right? But what what do you think happens if if this kind of this line of thinking is actually going through because it is it, it is one not based in in nature and reality unfortunately yeah and the thing is is that reality always wins 
So they, the, the, they're going to go down their, the Clower Piven path, which is apparently what Obama has chosen, which by the way was all thought up in line with Bill Ayers and Bernadine Dorn of the Weather Underground, and who are actually Obama's handlers, I believe. And, um, and, and, and so they have this completely irrational way of dealing with things, but they hope that the outcome is rational. And so they, they'll, they'll do these incredible things, and then when the outcome com- comes the way that you and I both know it's actually going to come out, uh, that they will deny, they will blame everyone else, they will do anything they can to uh, not take responsibility for what they created. And this is, by the way, classic psychopathic behavior. Um, yeah. and, and I, and I would, I would contend to you, that, and I'm not a Republican, don't get me wrong, Republicans sure. deserve yeah. to, to go down the drain of with their, everybody else. Uh, but uh, classic psychopathic behavior is to, uh, is, to, uh, not, is to try to claim that you are trying to make the world better when really you're destroying the world. That is what a psychopath always does, and that's what these guys are. And I would contend you that our president, Obama, is a psychopath, a complete psychopath, actually. Yeah, yeah. And, and he's the one that opened the doors to all these people. And, and you know the reason why they're not showing us these refugees that are coming over the border, why they won't let cameras into the, into the, into the refugee centers? Because they're not children. Yeah, exactly, yeah. They're not children. They're they're adults. There there was a a report I read yesterday of a guy with gray hair, deep wrinkles on his <laughs> face from Guatemala, saying that he was seventeen yeah. years old. Yeah, I've seen that too. Uh, <laughs> that kind of stuff. It's like, amazing. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and, and 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 this is the whole point is to overwhelm the system and to destroy our country, to destroy the way of life, and to make a world socialist state that will be run by the most cruel of people that you, you should all shudder just thinking about this future that we are heading towards. And if we don't wake up and stop this right now, we are all going to be living in a worldwide concentration camp. Yeah. That's where this is going. Yeah, I want to ask you about that, uh, the, the globalist kind of uh, idea that they have in mind for us all here. But before we do that, what do you think that this uh, h- hatred is, is based on? Because part of me agrees with you in terms of, you know, that they are, to a certain extent, they, they know what they're, what they're doing, right? But maybe they're, they think this is, this is great. I mean, this is how they get along. Uh, so many of the ideologues that are in support, unfortunately, of these kinds of strategies, but one part of me says that these people truly are they're in deep hatred of everything that the West represents and they want to do everything they can to destroy it. They might not even have a plan at the end of it of what's going to, you know, function in its place. They just want to destroy it. That's it, you know? I, I completely agree with you on that. I you know, um I, I I'll talk to leftists. I, I love to engage leftists. It's one of my favorite hobbies. And uh one of the things I'd love to do during the two thousand eight election was um uh, uh, get Sarah Palin's book and go down to liberal uh, coffee shops and act like I was reading it, even though I would never read that tripe, <laughs> but just just to piss right. them off, right? right. Yeah. And they would come over and they would literally start screaming at me. And then finally when they get done screaming at me, I would say, I'm not really reading this. I just did it to piss you off. Yeah. And um, so <laughs> I, it is driven by this intense hatred uh, and nothing else. That's what I think. I, I, I think it's, 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 it's jealousy. I think it's jealousy of, of our success. And, and, and so we, and it can't really be our success. So it has to be that, that we exploited people and that we took advantage of people. And, and we did do that. I'm not saying we didn't. But I'm saying that uh, who but, didn't, but, right? Who didn't at that exactly. time? Exactly, yeah. everybody did. And people, I was talking to a person um, who was telling me that the only people that have ever been enslaved were African Americans. You know, I almost oh fell my off God. my chair. Wow. And I'm like, dude, during the Roman Empire, ninety percent of the people that were were in Rome, who were all white, by the way, were all, were slaves. Yeah, uh, everybody had slaves. It was the way things were. It's not right. I'm against it, but they did have it. And um, I remember, uh, you know, classic uh, 
debate I saw between Dinesh D'Souza and, and yes, Bill Ayers. Great. Yeah. And, and, and Bill Ayers is going on and on about all the great people that stopped slavery. And, and Dinesh D'Souza, who I don't really care that much for, but he stopped him dead. He goes, I hear you talking about John Brown and this guy and this guy, but how come you never mentioned the 300,000 white Americans yeah. that died fighting for, to end slavery for the North? Yeah. You yeah. Know, and, and he just crushed Ayers and was right in the spot. Ayers had nothing he could respond to. No. Because Ayers is a complete and total psychopath <laughs> who actually should be in jail. Um, yeah, he's a he, convicted criminal, you know? He is. Yeah. He, he, he was a maniac. Uh, he, would, he would make bombs all day long. He's responsible for the two weathermen that died yeah. making bombs. Um, it was him that was encouraging them to do it. So, you know, and he's, he walks free. Um, apparently, you know, you can, you can be a terrorist on the left and, and you never have to worry about going to jail. Uh, and so he walks free even though he killed people and bond people and his rich girlfriend, and he's rich too, of course, they all get to go free while uh, people like, you know, us go to jail for petty crimes for years. Yeah. And, and this is this is what's going on and 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 the and, and and the left is driven by pure absolute hatred but here's the thing they can't i what i've noticed about hardcore leftists is that for the most part they are not very well traveled people no of course um, not when i meet one i start talking to him i say have you ever been to india have you ever been you know to a third world country did you ever live in a marxist country because i've done all three and uh, and and it's always no 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 I never have and I, well you know you should I lived in Poland in the 70s and uh, for a year and I'm going to tell you it was pure unadulterated hell living in under a communist country yeah and I and I, I would probably actually consider suicide before living in a communist state actually oh yeah lived. oh absolutely I mean I've been brought up in a in a cultural Marxist society not flat out like Eastern Europe I mean you tell tell them about communism they just laugh in your face they've been through all of it they know exactly what this is about but uh, see ideological americans still don't because as just as you say they haven't seen any of that and and our version in the nordic countries is of course a, a softer one perhaps even more of a a thx type of <laughs> of marxist socialism yeah, right. than anything else you know but nonetheless i i've i've seen it i've lived in it and i'm amazed when people confront me and say why are you why are you attacking the left it's like well i've been i've been living in this for you know 30 Four years now. This, I know exactly what it is about. I've seen it from the inside. I've been brought up into it. But uh, you know, it's it doesn't seem to apply because it's uh, it, people are ideologues and they they believe in what they're being told, unfortunately, by these uh, lying propagandists and ideologues that are control of our media right now. You know, and, and it's absolutely right. And 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 before people think that I'm. You know, I don't know. Every time that I criticize the left, people think that I'm some kind of George Bush Republican. Right. I want to yeah. I want to point out that the neocons, the ones that got us into the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, and now are trying to get us into Syria and all the other places, those guys were all leftists in college. Oh, definitely. All of them. The New York yeah. intellectuals, the whole neocon, yeah. you know, they were tr they were Trotskyites actually. They were they more. Were. Yeah. Elliot Abrams grew up in, uh, in the Red School. He was a red diaper baby. That's, that's right. I mean, and so you know, you have to ask yourself, well, what are guys like Norman Potterus and Elliot Abrams, who all grew up leftist, communist, and now they're conservative, so -called, neocons, yeah. so-called really? conservative? You know, you, yeah. you could believe this. Yeah. And, you know, conservatives wouldn't go invade a country that didn't do anything to them. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it, that's not a very conservative position at all. And 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 so you know what they're doing is they just switch sides. That now they want to use the American military to to stop whatever countries that they want to have stopped. But the, the the agenda is the same. That's why there's no difference between George Bush and Barack Obama. No, they're both neocons. They are. It's controlled opposition. They know exactly what they're doing, and it's it's been pretty amazing to learn actually. about we've done that recently, looking back into how the Democratic Party and the Republican Party how they have. Uh, shifted ideologies and everything and throughout history even when you look back for example i mean i didn't know for example that even like uh you know the kkk came out of the democrats and even the Absolutely. jim crow laws and all that kind of stuff I was like whoa wait a minute we never hear about this stuff why is that you know <laughs> well we don't and and you know the fact is is that the uh republican party was started to end slavery I was a Democrat party was there to, to keep, keep it in slavery place. Going. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, 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 and Albert Pike, the Freemason, he was KKK. He was a Democrat. 
Uh, so you look at all this stuff and you realize that it's just this big game they're pulling on us. And we, what we really need to do is absolutely quit believing in the, in the uh, political dynamic at all and, and, and start um, constructing some kind of political system that's uh, as far away from the left-right uh, paradigm as we can get because that's just a, a, a game. Yeah. It's just a big game that the power elites, the bankers, and all the rest use to control us. And, you know, the, what I think is going on, which I find really exciting in this country right now, is uh, the millennial generation, the uh, ones that are 30 years old or so, they're actually really going libertarian. Yes. And, uh, and I think that that's actually the most exciting movement um, around at the moment. I know a lot of people don't like libertarianism because of the propaganda, but uh, libertarianism is a very, very interesting uh, political philosophy. Well, exactly. And it's, it's more kind of, you know, you're under your own banner, more self-responsibility, you dictating how you want to live your life. I mean, and that's what we're talking about here. I, I'm not trying to see the difference here between the left ideology and in this case, not, not, not the conservative necessarily, maybe a more paleoconservative one, if anything then, but at least right. a libertarian one would be that I, I wouldn't ban somebody from wanting to live in their communist commune or whatnot. But if you look at the, the left and the communist ideology, they would never allow someone to live under a free market system, even if it was a small local economy. So it's like one system fits within the other, but the other does not fit within one of them. So the, the, the idea here is you have to ask yourself is, okay, what system would allow me to live my life as I want to do and not imposing that on other people, right? That's what this is all about for me anyway. Exactly. Yeah, the left, if the left doesn't, if, if, if a conservative doesn't like guns, he doesn't have a gun. If a leftist doesn't like guns, then he wants to outlaw guns. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's how they work. And, 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 and I'll say this clearly, I know a lot of people in Europe probably are going to freak out when I say this, but the last stand between us and tyranny is America's gun laws. And I, I you know, I, I know people are going to get upset about that. No, they, not they, here. Americans not anymore. are crazy. No, no, no. I'm glad to hear that <laughs> because uh, that is, we will know, and you will all know when it's over is when they start confiscating guns in America. Because mm -hmm. the only thing that's stopping their tyranny is the fact that they know that they come down our driveways, we're going to blow their ass away. And that is scaring them, and they won't do it. But they're working yeah. their way towards this. This is their number one goal. I'm absolutely convinced that all these recent false flag uh, theater operations are all done from Sandy Hook to Aurora to um, Santa Barbara. They're all done to get the guns out of our hands. What's interesting about it, though, is it isn't working. Um, it isn't even working in Connecticut where they did Sandy Hook. Now they're finding out that, you know, most of the people who own guns did not turn them in. And um, the same thing ha happened in Colorado, which is kind of surprising because it's a western state. But they outlawed certain kinds of guns, and now they're starting to throw out all their state senators. The governor is afraid to run for re-election because he thinks he's going to get voted out because of the gun law that he gun laws that he passed. And in the meanwhile, gun sales are going through the roof because everybody realizes that this is happening, and they know that it's happening, and it's going to continue happening until we do something about it. And what we should do is not have a violent revolution. What we should do is simply uh, opt out of their system. I mean, I just don't think, I just if we opt out of their system, then they aren't going to have anything to do. Even now, they're, we really, everything we're doing in this country and in this world is so archaic. We don't even need to have Congress go meet in Washington, D.C. We can just have them meet over the Internet. Yeah. They can stay home in their own districts yeah. where they aren't getting approached by lobbyists all day and, 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 and this kind of thing. And this is the kind of thing we need to rethink what we're doing here. We have new tools. We don't need to do things like they did 200 years ago. <laughs> and uh, and, 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 and in any way, the centralization of power that happens from our congressmen and senators and everybody going to Washington, D.C. is really a bad thing. I am I am amazed. I mean, it, it's not working very well. So of course that we have that now. But a, a, the, a country the size of America, kind of similar to what they're trying to do with the European Union. I mean, that's just that's insanity yep. going in that direction. I mean, they should they should break up. This it should be the states individually rule over themselves and decide how they want to run things in their own state, even their local communities. You know. 
I agree, and I think we're going to have. We will eventually. Their their silly ass experiments are going to fail, and then we're going to go back to something like that. But the point is, is that why are we allowing these guys to even experiment with us and with yeah. our children and and all of this? And that's what they're doing. They don't know what they're doing. So they're just experimenting. They have nothing but disdain for any tradition. So they don't reach back to a tradition that may have worked before and see if it can work again because Marxism has nothing but disdain for all traditions yes. because all traditions were started by the exploiting class, supposedly. <laughs> and it, 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 it's just and so yeah. these people, these leftists are, are actually bereft of any kind of past except for their own past, which is nothing but, you know, brutality and killing, because let's face it, if, if you count Hitler as a socialist, which he surely was, then the three top murderers of history were all leftists, uh, yeah. Mao, Stalin, and, and Hitler, with, you know, racking up over 200 million kills. And, uh, you know, so we have to ask ourselves, wow, okay, so maybe I don't like religion, but did re religions ever kill 200 million people? No. No, actually, the only thing that's actually managed to kill that many people on this planet is leftism. I hate yeah. to say that, but it's yeah. the truth. Well, exactly, and I, I think without a, a firm basis in some kind of, uh, you know, tra tra tradition, ancestral, I mean, a cultural rooted uh, civilization, of course, that will actually leave them uh, wobbling to that extent. But that's why they're so adamant about destroying that. Look at the education system. Look at how people are you know, raced with this kind of, uh, you know, the Frankfurt School type, uh, you know, politics yep. and history and, you know, Howard Zinn is, you know, writing the history books and everything else. It's like, yep. it's very intentional, you know, very intentional in terms of trying to demonize everything that has to do with that traditionalism. So it's very important, I think, as well, to actually fight back in terms of uh, of reclaiming history and, and, and pointing to accuracy within it, because otherwise people are going to be you know, they're going to look at a movie like, uh, you know, The Butler or, you know, 12 Years a Slave and think that that's, oh, that's how things were. And it's only that that existed in, in America, for example, you know, and, it, and it's like yep. the majority of slaves were what Irish that came to America, you know, it's yeah, like, they were. oh, my God. I mean, there's so much there that I, I, I don't believe it's like incredible that that's not being discussed on a more intelligent, rational level. You know, it is. In fact, I was talking to, to the writer Howard Bloom a few weeks ago, and he was telling me that he was trying to teach these, you know, kids that indigenous cultures weren't these peaceful, loving cultures at all, that they were having all sorts of internecine struggles and fights in, in, in Africa and in Central and South America, and that being taught that they were these passive, loving cultures and that they didn't develop war until the Europeans landed uh, is just a big bucket of BS. Yeah. And, and, and he said, you can't, he said, we've done forensics on, on their skeletons and, and they, they, there was nothing but murder and war going back thousands of years before any European landed there. And so, you know, this is the, this is the thing is that we have, for instance, I was talking to a leftist and, and he was talking about the integration of North America, Canada, America, mm -hmm. and Mexico. Yeah. And he, how good this was going to be. And I said, well, um, what do you know about the gay laws in Mexico? He said, well, I don't know. Well, probably, you know gay, probably, I don't know if they allow marriage, but they, they probably have laws very similar to what we have. And I said, I said dude, <laughs> if you're caught with a guy in Mexico and you're a guy, you'll be stoned to death. I, I, it is like completely hmm. anathema homosexuality in Mexico. And we're lining ourselves up with this country, and, and, and their values are not our values. And in fact, I would bet that their values are actually going to overwhelm our values uh, eventually uh, when, when the population. The demographics over. change, yeah. 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 And, and let's not underestimate, you know, the Catholic Church is behind a lot of this too because they want. United States to be a Catholic country, so they're bringing in all these Catholics, and that's another thing that I think is just kind of wrong. And, and there's so many things wrong going right now, from ISIS in Iraq to what's going on mm. in the Ukraine to you know, Putin and Syria uh, to uh, the border crisis in the United States uh, and, and, and Snowden's revelations. I mean, we're really on the very, very precipice of either a successful revolution against this, but more likely the final throes of, of, 
ending of our civilization seems to be at hand. Right yeah, now. I know, and it's uh, it's a, a time for great concern, but also great opportunity within that. I mean, one thing that does scare me is the demographic question as well. I mean, look at uh, you have movements to the south of the border there, like La Raza. You know, they're trying to take back all the land in the southwest, and you know, claim that this is like. I mean, tough luck, but the fact is it was, you know, the American-Mexican War and America won, and they gave back half of the land to Mexico at that point. It was annexed back to them. You know, it's like they could have kept all of it. The fact is that this is, it might not be, with our current moral lens, I say this often, but I think it's true. That's why I keep repeating it. With If we're going to view how whatever kind of moral thing we have today upon the world 200 years ago or 2,000 years ago or worse, 20,000 years ago, we're going to miss the plot, just as you said. The, the fact is we've been fighting over territory and over resources forever, as long as we can remember. In fact, we're still doing it, no matter how people are trying to deny that to themselves. And I think that movements like La Raza, example, is, is proof of that very aspect, that they are still seeking to take you know, back what they considered that, you know, was theirs and all that. But the fact is, this is something that is... Uh, you know, not applicable in the scenario that we're looking at. I th so I think that people have to understand what's going on and what is happening here, because as you said, the the uh, the demographics is the nation. It doesn't matter if you know the there if there's all Mexicans in uh, in the Southwest states, right? It's it's going to be Mexico, whether or not they're calling it America, right? Well, it almost is. Um, there's there's ranchers that I know that are on the border, have a big ranchers on the border in, in Arizona with Mexico, and they can't even go outside their house. Um, they'll be shot at. Uh, this is our own land. Uh, the, the, yeah. There's hundreds of people squatting on their land, and they can't do anything about it. The sheriff won't come and do anything because he's afraid of being called a racist. Uh, of course, the federal government's not going to help him because the federal government is actually the one behind all this. So, yeah. uh, you know, what we really need to do is 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 get rid of the federal government. I think that's actually the only answer that there really is and go back to state local ruling. Uh, it's just not working and centralization of power is always wrong. It's the most, it's always what a psychopath would want is, is, is more and more centralization of power. We have to realize that the people in charge are psychopaths and we don't want to give them anything anything that they want. We want to completely uh, play a denial game with them. There is a waking up going on, but it's not happening fast enough, and that worries me. I think that's one of the reasons why they're acting so fast and doing everything right now, is they're afraid that there's going to be this, you know, wake up and then everybody's just going to go crazy, which actually could happen. I've heard rumors that um, Ed Snowden has all of the addresses, um, uh, of all of the wealthiest people on earth and all of their assets and the NSA had collected all that and Snowden has this and he's actually told um, the powers that be that he's going to release this information and uh, you can imagine if it turns out that the Rockefeller family is worth 50 trillion dollars you know, people could go absolutely out of their minds. I, I just and, have a uh, feeling, though, that those particular people and addresses were is probably going to be left out of that, don't you think? They're going to go for, like, the, the Koch brothers instead, and only that. <laughs> so, it could be. You know, um, not it, the Rothschilds. You, you may be so, right. Yeah. You may be right, but at the same time, we know the NSA know, is watching everything, and sure. they know everything. Sure, oh, of course, definitely. No, so definitely. They, have, they, they have their records, for sure. Yeah. And, um, and, and uh, you know... Uh, I, I, I just I know people in the NSA, and they tell me that they know everything. They know every single thing that's going to happen months before it happened. I heard this 15 years ago. Right. And and they also told me, of course, that they were watching everybody's emails and phone calls, and they've been doing that for years. Yeah. So I, I, I don't doubt that. Know. I don't doubt that at all. Yeah. That's what they've been set up to do. That's the design. That's why they're getting millions and putting up uh, massive data centers up in Utah and everything else. So that's that's, that's what that right. is all about, you know. But um, do you think that th this, then, to a large extent, is about creating, if they're that uh, you know clever and can think ahead in that regard, um, as a kind of a divide and conquer tactic? This is about actually creating conflicts, uh, primarily based on on ethnicity and 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 you know nationalism and countries and all kinds of stuff like that. That they want to try to, as much as possible. Oh, actually, let me rephrase that. They're actually trying to break apart the nations that do exist now with the aid of eth ethnicities, for example, through mass immigration, if they're just sort of flooding into one area or whatnot, so that you actually get a complete picture where people are going to be only focused on that alone. And while the elite, of course, are setting up their control grid 
as an excuse around this to to try to say, oh, well, we have, have to keep the peace here, you know. So more surveillance is going to go in, more militarized police is going to go in, and all the nightmare scenarios that we can only dream of at this point is actually going to be spearheaded in there because of a conflict that they sought to create in the beginning. Is that a possibility? That is what's going on. They, they seek to, they think that, they, and they're right, that, that it will weaken every country by uh, weakening each ethnic group, um, and, and then no ethnic group can can get together and fight against the powers that be, which is why why they're doing it. And and they're tra- they're targeting the most powerful ethnic groups first, and all those other minorities that aren't being targeted right now. Don't worry, you're going to be targeted. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. And you may cheer on what's going on in Europe and the United States uh, because you think it's not going to happen where you are. But I guarantee you. I'll even go one step further. When the United States and Europe finally fall and all the leftists are cheering as uh, we are all burning away, that's when you all are going to get yours. Yeah. Because we're the only thing stopping them from an all-out, cruel, unbelievably bad dictatorship that is coming if we don't stop it. Yeah, I think gun politics then in America is a very important aspect of this stage. I think in terms of uh, you know, Europe, there are much more pessimistic. Pessimistic. The only thing that uh, kind of breaks the norm is, of course, uh, Switzerland. They're quite unique in Europe. The vast majority of, of men there are actually between, uh, you know, 20 to 30. They're, they're conscripted into the military. They go through military training. They actually get get their own weapon as well. And that's also, of course, why Switzerland is one of the highest gun ownership rates in the world. But also and look at... crime rate. Exactly. Yes, exactly. That's just it, you know. So... <laughs> They're seeking to, to change that in America. I mean, I hope that this is something that changes in Europe, or even if necessary, that people actually get a gun, no matter what the uh, what the authorities and what the states and the and the governments are saying. You know, I agree, and I think we ought. I think the United States should take a, become a Switzerland like model. I would I would think that would be awesome if every American had trained and, 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 and defended their home and their neighborhood and their cities and they knew how to do it. This thing on the border would never be happening right now. And uh, the, they don't want that. What they, what Obama's really secret wish is, a very alarming secret wish, is to create a domestic army that's just as well-funded and armed as the foreign military in the United States. That should give everybody pause for great concern. Yeah, exactly. It, it definitely is. So one of the ways they've been trying to do this, of course, is, is with all these you know false flag attacks and trying to blame guns. Then you have in lockstep, of course, all the Hollywood morons and idiots stepping right out of the woodworks and so, oh my God, we have to do something. You know, movie after movie or video after video, I guess, are released with all this nonsense. You know, in terms of that, it's somehow the guns fault that people get shot and not respond you know not people responsible but in this case jay we're of course talking about people who are uh, you know in some cases they're flat out mind controlled by the you know by the uh, in- intelligence agencies they're on ssris and everything else and and in some cases they just seem to actually create the events flat out to blame this blame the guns you know for what's happening right but well, it's true i mean the one thing that uh, all the killings have in common besides a gun is that they're all on on antidepressants. Uh, how come we're not going after the pharmaceutical industries? Uh, you know, and we, it, 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 but in a lot of cases, I mean, we're not even sure the events that have been described to us have really occurred that way at all. I mean, it, it's, I take Sandy Hook. Uh, uh, Sandy Hook, the murders at the Sandy Hook school have got to go down as the most bizarre uh, case I've ever ever encountered in all my years, and the more that I look and try, and I've read the 10,000 page police report, and, and I've done tried everything, I still have no idea what happened that day, and I'm not sure there's anybody outside of maybe the investigating police officer Sendensky who actually does know what happened at Sandy Hook that day. I don't know if children really died. I don't know if right. they didn't die. Yeah. I don't know what happened. All I know is the only people I know that know what happened um, actually don't know anything. And that's Joe, the average American. They think that they know what happened, but when you start talking to them, you realize they don't know what happened either. 
the media, Anderson Cooper and the rest of them, they attack people like me. Salon.com in particular attacked me mm-hmm. um, and, and you know, went after me and called me a conspiracy theorist and said that I was being irresponsible about Sandy Hook. But the, the thing is, is that I wouldn't be speculating about Sandy Hook if the media told me, had done their job and told me what was going on. But the media didn't. And so we have to find out for ourselves. So a lot of independent people started looking into Sandy Hook and, whoa, what do we find? We find that almost every single thing they told us is a lie. And, yeah. you know, everything from uh, the, uh, um, the helicopter footage showing 26 Christmas trees behind the firehouse uh, on the day of the killings, when there's actually 26 killings. And they just happen to have that many Christmas trees ready to display that night. <laughs> I was yeah. like, really? Yeah. You expect us to believe this? Um, you know, there's a guy, uh, Rosen, Gene Rosen. Mm-hmm. This guy can't keep his story straight no matter what. He's, he changes his story over and over. First, there's a bus driver leaving kids out on front of, front of his house. Then the bus driver disappears. Then, he, you know, he never, he doesn't hear helicopters. He lives right next to the school. Yet, and he has these children in his basement. He never questions them why they're not in school. Why are there helicopters going over his house every single minute? He doesn't hear them, apparently. Uh, it's, it's just amazing. The whole yeah. story is just amazing. And then we have the very end of it, Obama showing up with his fake tears. And what does he want? He wants gun control. Yeah. And, and what is this going to fix? The criminals, of course, they just, oh, of course, we, you're not allowed to have a gun. All right. Okay. I'll, I'll just put it down and walk away then. You know, it's yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> I mean, look at, um, uh, Kensawa in Georgia, actually mandatory to have a gun there. And I think violent crime rates are about 85% below national and uh, state rates. The uh, property crimes are, uh, from 46 to 56 below. And this has actually been going down and down and down. This, these statistics were from, from 2001. Uh, then they did further studies from 2003 up to 2008. And it just keeps going down and down all the time because of this. So it's obvious that they know that an armed society is going to cause less uh, crimes, violent crimes and everything else. But since this is what they do want, okay, let's take away the guns. Very simple. Yep. And that's the moment when that happens. Like I said, that's the moment when you will know then that it's time to get out. Wherever you're going to go, go, because you do not want to be in the United States when they outlaw guns. And uh, uh, it's going to be just about the most dangerous, ugly situation ever. And, you know, people don't realize we had uh, Mayor Bloomberg, who um, has been using his billions of dollars to try to get gun control legislation passed out in the in the hinterlands, especially in Colorado, where he dropped about 20 million bucks to get Coloradoans to uh, their legislature anyway to vote uh, down some gun vote in some gun laws of which every single one of those guys has now lost their elections and is out of office. So Bloomberg got all upset a few days ago and said, "Oh, everybody in Colorado is a hick, and there's no roads in that state." You know, <laughs> implying that you know everybody in Colorado is just an idiot, and we don't even have roads in Colorado or anything. And you know, that that's exactly what they think of us. That's yeah. exactly what the elites think of us. If we don't do what they want with guns, then we must be a bunch of dumb hicks living in places where they don't even have roads. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and, and, that, and that's what they think of us. Yeah, and, and, it, it's amazing that they're trying to appeal to rationality in that regard and try to say that, oh, only an enlightened society would hand them over. I mean, it's like, look at, so again, some of the European countries. And it, it doesn't matter if you take away the guns, people... They beat each other to death with baseball bats. They knife each yep. other. They find anything they want. So it's not the, it's not the tool. It's um, you know, the, if if someone wants to hurt another human being, they will do it. But the fact is, if guns are around, they're less, <laughs> they're less, uh, you know, probability that they will do that. Well, it's, there's just no doubt about it. And and you know, and, and what are we going to do when when we can't defend ourselves anymore? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and and that's that's the question we all have to be asking ourselves. You know, uh, so, I mean, and, and the real thing is, of course, it has nothing to do with um, killings in theaters and, and, and schools. It all has to do with the fact that we can still stop them from their nefarious plans, and that's the whole point. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and in fact, we have to help our liberal friends. 
is my conclusion. Our liberal friends do not have the mental capacity to actually look down the road and see the future, but we do. And since we have that ability, and apparently they don't, then we just have to take responsibility for the whole thing, and we'll save their sorry asses too. Yeah, I'm amazed that it's so kind of set in the uh, in the in these divisive issues. The, the how the how polarized it is. That if okay, if you if you're for this, you have to be against this and that, and if you're for that, you have to be against you know this or that. Yep. It, it's very interesting that it's um, that it's so polarized on the, uh, across those lines that it comes like a a ready-made packet that you just kind of install like you're some stupid computer or something. You know, it's like think can't people think outside of that and actually just an issue by issue basis and say, okay, what's rational in this situation? What, what do you actually do to improve things as opposed to, is this what, you know, they want me to do over at lean forward MSNBC, you know, it's like, ah, hopeless, hopeless. <laughs> well, it is, it's right. And, and the thing is, is that again, they're just, they're not governed by anything uh, rational. They're only governed by what makes them feel good in the moment. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you say to them, okay, so everyone should come over the border, right? Yes, everyone should. We just should have compassion for the children, who aren't really children either. But we should have compassion for the children. Okay, so at what point do we not have compassion? I mean, is it when the, the four billionth child has come into America? Do we then say, okay, now we're not going to be compassionate anymore? Where does the compassion stop? And the, and the thing is, is that it, it shouldn't be, your, your decision should never be governed solely by compassion. Compassion is great. Nothing, nothing against it. We should all be more compassionate towards our fellow humans. But we also should be rational about the things. We don't want to live in a country with 800 million people because that's what's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. And and, and 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 we don't want that. Rational people should not want that. We don't even have enough water in the West for ourselves right now. How are we going to support millions and millions of more people when the whole West is drying up? Uh, so, you know, again, it's rational against irrational, emotion, politically, emotion being ruled, politics being ruled by emotions instead of by the rational mind. Yes. And, and there's nothing that rational people can do against people who are ruled by their uh, roiling emotions. I mean... You know, I know. Well, the, the point there is that this is uh, we, we'll we'll round up in a little bit here for the first segment, Jay. But a few more points on this, and we'll talk a little bit more about your website and such. But uh, I think that this is also about actually shutting down that engine that, for example, in in the case of America, has managed to actually give so much in foreign aid. Let's say, I mean, the old addict. What does it say? Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for he can feed himself for a lifetime. And that's kind of what this is about. Everyone wants to go somewhere else where it's better when instead these people should stay and fight wherever they are to improve the conditions where, where they are at right isn't this isn't that the idea here you know exactly those countries are getting so much benefit from this they're getting rid of all their criminals yes. they're getting rid of all their poor people getting rid of all their sick people and we're getting them mm -hmm. and and they're getting all the benefits and to be honest with you it's an act of bloody war. Mm -hmm. That's the way I feel about it. It's population I feel that wars. Mexico, yep. has, uh, Mexico has declared war on us. Yes. And we're letting them fight a war against us without firing a shot back. And I think it's time to, that we just need to take control back of our country. Men need to become real men again. Yes. And we need to, like, uh, say, no, enough's enough. We're done with you guys. And what's funny about this is, of course, that they, in this case... Um, would not manage to go very far if it wasn't for the the anti-Western sentiments within the country. What I'm getting at is that this is a virus from within within our own ranks that is causing oh, this. Yeah. That's where the problem is. Not that there are other people out there who are poor, etc. If, if if again, if there was if this was rational, these people would work wherever they are at to improve their conditions wherever they are, instead of taking these problems with them into the you know third world problems into the first world. And the fact is, you can't have a first world country with a third world or second world population. That's just not going to happen. No, it's not. And uh, so it's pretty much, uh, you know, I, I actually do believe that people are waking up and realizing how dangerous the left is. I really do. I think that's starting now. I'm seeing it. I'm seeing people that used to be libtards now changing and coming over to uh, uh, this side. 
And uh, I think that I'm uh, reading some of these statements by some of these liberal congressmen who suddenly are calling for strict immigration laws and things. Yeah. It's all happening the last few days. And I think that uh, the political tide is swinging against this thing, and uh, it's swinging real hard against it. That's what I think. Yeah, definitely. The question is if it's uh, is it, if it's too late and too exactly yep. too fast enough. We'll talk more about that. We'll be return here a little bit, Jay. But uh, t talk to us a little bit about some of the new things you have coming out. We mentioned briefly. We can talk more about that in the second as well. But you have a third. Uh, Kubrick film coming out, uh, The Last Avatar, another one that you've released. Uh, tell us about this and, and give us your websites as well. Yeah, my website is jwidener.com, and you can buy my my stuff at uh, sacredmysteries.com. Yeah, I have a um, a new feature film coming out, which kind of addresses some of these issues. And not not it's not a political uh, movie, but it does address some of these issues. It's called The Last Avatar. And um, I think uh, your audience will really like it. And it, we were getting picked up by a real distributor and the whole thing. So it'll actually be released in theaters. Oh, and, right. Uh, where, where is it yeah. going to be? Where is, is it going to be running? Do you know yet? It, all, everywhere. It's everywhere. Be, oh, yeah, cool. we're good, we're good. we've got a, 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 real, a very, fairly big distribution company that's backing us. And they really like the film. And they think it's going to help change things. And that's what we're hoping. So that'll be out soon, and then um, sometime between now and the end of the year, I'm trying to finish my third Kubrick Odyssey film, Kubrick the Magician, um, and that is going to be extremely explosive, and the reason that it hasn't come out yet is because I just keep finding more and more things to add to it, um, but I'm going to I'm going to blow a big, wide hole in the side of Hollywood. Great. Well, it's, that's what we need at these stage, you know, because yeah. that propaganda machine is just tirelessly working towards our demise. You know? It is. It oh, is. my God. Yeah. All right. Great stuff. That. So the third installation, uh, installment, I should say, of the Kubrick Odyssey uh, film is coming up. Check that out. And then, of course, the last Avatar. More information about this at jwidener.com. We'll have the links up. Stay with us, Jay. We'll return shortly with more. We'll continue with the second hour with Jay Widener at our members website. Subscribe and access every single show, video, film, TV episode, insight and commentary that uh, we've done from uh, 2006 till today. When we proceed, we'll speak more about the film industry and the corrosive aspects that Hollywood, the entertainment industry and media has on our young people. We discuss what it would take to set up an alternative to the current film empires controlled by do you know who? Why is there not more money poured into something like this? Where are the people with money that still believe in culture, morals, values, and tradition? Something needs to be done urgently in order to uh, start controlling the dialogue of the culture again. Politics is a reflection of culture, not the other way around. And this is why they have been so successful in hijacking and then creating their own cultural framework. We discuss why they hate Walt Disney so much, and then we move on to discuss the uh, insanity of basic income and the final termination of the engine of human creativity by the state and their final goal of government dependency. Do not miss the next hour coming up. RedIceMembers.com is the website. We'll uh, speak to you after the break. Thank you for staying with us.